Hey, how's everybody doing? This is Mike with Loudwater. I uh, was out running around doing some errands today and got tagged from a follower about a case. And then shortly after that, one of the family members from that case reached out to me. And um, basically, I told them what we were about and they kind of knew what we were doing because that's the power of each and every one of my followers. Uh, because of y'all, this case was brought to my attention. Um, it is details of disappearance. Casey Ann Pogue went missing from Greenville Memorial Hospital on July 5th, 2020. That's in Greenville, South Carolina. Casey was disoriented and was taken by EMS to the hospital and then was able to leave on foot. She did not have her phone. She had a large red bag with her. Again, I'm not going to go into all the details. I'm going to let the family tell the story like I always do. Uh, this is one that's pretty close, so we're actually going to try and go out there and see if we can't find anything tomorrow. Um, if you're from that area, you obviously know it's super busy. But if you, for some reason, think that you might have remembered something on this day, it's right after July 4th, right? You know, and it was during COVID time frame, uh, where pretty much everything in this area was locked down. If you were out and about and you think you remember seeing her, there is some video footage. Unfortunately, it wasn't able to be downloaded, so they lost that. Uh, and again, all that's in here. But again, I want to thank each and every one of you that watches, subscribes, follows, shares, does everything. Because of the Loudwater community, these cases keep getting the attention that they deserve. Uh, because of y'all, right? Y'all just as much part of this as I am or anybody else that works with me. So continue doing what you're doing. God bless you all. Know something, say something. Here you go. Uh, like I said, so I'm Michael. I'm the owner, founder of Loudwater Outfitters. And what we do is we assist families in uh, missing persons cases and cold cases, right? So we have, we focus primarily on the searches, right? But we also speak with the families or we work with the families directly to give them the opportunity to get that story out there. Because unfortunately, mm -hmm. uh, unfortunately, a lot of these cases I don't want to say fall to the wayside, but there's the, if we're able to bring even, you know, a glimpse of more awareness to it, that's what we want to do, right? Just that way you can get your story out. People can hear it. And then even if it's somebody that sees something that they had no idea was even of any importance at all, you know, maybe they hear it, they see it, and they come forward with that, right? Um, our only, the thing that we focus on the most is helping you out or helping the family as much as possible to find that missing loved one. Cause that's what we, that, that's what we do this for. Uh, we don't charge a dime, never ask you for a dime. We're going to strictly off donations, things like that. So, and this one's semi, semi close. So the other gentleman that's on here is John. So he runs the podcast and, uh, oh, okay. yeah, so we'll conduct this interview. I'll, uh, I'll get it edited and uploaded. That way people can, you know, find out about what's going on with the story. And then I'm sure if you're interested, he would be more than happy to have the podcast where you can talk to him as well. Yeah, that would be wonderful. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. So, and um, so basically, the way that it works is, I just give you the the floor, pretty much, if you will, and then just tell us your story, everything that you want to about it, uh, about your loved one, uh, basically any and everything that you want to be put out into the public, right? So we don't act as private investigators. We're not trying to, you know, uncover something crazy here. We just what we go off of, or for us when it comes to searching, which I was reading up on it today, and I, I see y'all have done a ton as far as the searching, uh, different groups. Yeah. That came in and done that so really truthfully i believe it's just going to be one of those things where again i always 99 times out of 100 somebody knows something that either they're not coming forward with or they're just they're, they're not thinking anything of it so hopefully and pray to god that uh that'll change with this so right. without, without taking up any more of your time i'm just going to give the floor to you and you just walk us through the story pretty much there sure so casey um pogue she is my cousin um, but we grew up mainly like sisters. She um, is a only child. Well, I mean, she does have stepbrothers and, and all, but um, she and I grew up very close. Um, so when she went missing, of course, that was the one thing that my mom did was she turned to me and said, Casey's missing. Where would she be? Um, she went to the um the hospital in Greer on July 4th and she was released after that then um she uh was taken back on July 5th now this time was a little bit different she had been having mental episodes um it probably related to drugs um or alcohol we don't know uh, but she went on July 5th to the hospital um, they told her friend's parents to call um, police first 
and then have the police call EMS to take her. That way they would put her on a hold. That did not happen. Um, and so later on that evening, they just released her. No ride, no phone, no purse, no nothing. Um, and so she left the hospital um, and it showed in the surveillance that she had approached a van, an uh, older model van um, that was blue that had someone in it. Uh, she had approached, she had gotten in the van and then a few seconds, maybe to a minute, she got back out. So we would really like to find whoever may have been there at that time in that blue older model minivan um, and just see what her mental state was at that time. Did she mention anything about where she was going? Um, I have been through those things with her previously and she will have periods where she's lucid enough mm -hmm. to remember things. Um, from there, she left the hospital and walked down West Ferris down to Augusta. And then from there, we don't know what happened to her. Okay. Uh, I'm sorry. I'm not trying to interrupt you, but all, as far as that van, do y'all happen to have the pictures of that or just, I, I know it said in there, didn't have, no, they didn't get a tag or anything like that, mm -hmm. but so this is near the Greenville hospital, correct? It is. It was um, actually on the property of Greenville Memorial. So it was almost in like the parking garage area. Mm -hmm. Um Unfortunately, when I asked the investigator if I could come by to look at any surveillance, just kind of see what direction she went, um, any of her mannerisms, they don't have the video. Hmm. So, did the, did was, any of the, did any of the surrounding locations have any? I know there's a gas station at the end of that road, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that well. we, I asked about those things as well. Yes, sir. Um, I had even asked if they had checked to see if anyone on that strip may have had like uh, cameras, mm -hmm. like doorbell cameras, because those are popping up everywhere. Yep. See if anybody saw anything during that time, then. <laughs> uh, so, well, what about so if they're saying that they didn't have any footage of this, did somebody report this? Like, was this an eyewitness thing or I mean, no, they, they, they initially. No, they initially had the surveillance, which the investigator saw. He made notes in his um, report. And I can also, I'll send you that as well. I have the um, the FOIA report. Okay. Um, so it has everything listed. But he had initially taken notes from what he saw on the surveillance. It was never downloaded. So it was deleted off of the hospital server after seven days. Oh, okay. So there was no way to go back to get that. Okay. So, but initially um, there was some video there. That's yes. where they found that. Okay, I just wanted to make yes. sure because I was like, I didn't, I wasn't understanding how they were telling you they saw it, but they didn't have any video. But that that makes sense to me now. Yeah. So they initially had it. So right now, that's really all we have to go off of is whatever the investigator put into the report. Okay. So, um, my my gut feeling is that her friend is more than what he's saying mm -hmm. um who what's the relationship or what is who is her? just a friend or where, um, where does he friend. come into play so casey and ned at a mental health facility okay um probably about 10 years ago and from there it's been kind of off and on with a very toxic type relationship so it seemed like when casey was doing really good he would kind of come in to the picture um and then she wasn't doing so great anymore um he has his own problems with drug and alcohol dependency um and it was very it was just really toxic on there so they would take periods of time where they would not talk for a significant amount of time casey would get back on her feet and then everything just kind of fell apart again um so when she was having some trouble, um, his parents have a rental home okay. and they allowed her to come live in the rental home, rent that from her. Um, and it was on the same property that um, they are on um, and also had a condo mm -hmm. on, um, on Augusta 
near Augusta. So it's only about a mile from the hospital from where Casey went missing. So my thought process was that she was trying to go there because she did um, in the video, it did show she went across the street where the doctor's offices are. Mm -hmm. um, and she did sit there for a moment. Um, and it was almost like she was trying to figure out where she was and what she was doing. And then she began walking in that direction. So I just had a really strong feeling that she was maybe realizing where she was and, oh, his house is right up the road. I can go there. Mm -hmm. um, and he did keep a key outside where she knew where it was because at the time um, he had a cat that she would oftentimes go feed. Um, he always said that he was, you know, he had such mental health that he couldn't um, function on his own. So he often stayed at his parents' home, even though he, they bought him the condo <laughs> and he was never there. He always stayed at his parents' house. Um, so he was with Casey a lot when she moved in and you could see kind of the decline there too, once again, um, and then she just started having these episodes and she went to the hospital and that was it. We didn't know that they had even released her. Um, my mom had checked in with who initially called for the police to come and to get EMS out there. And we didn't know that they had released Casey. Uh, I guess Nathan's mom had touched base and that's how she found out that they had just released Casey as well. When So when she went to the hospital, was it on an involuntary committal? My we God. were hoping that that's what it would be, mm -hmm. that they would hold her at least for 72 hours. Um, because when she went to Greer Hospital the day before, um, you know, they didn't do anything. They basically, they called his mom again um, and they went and picked her up. Yep. Had, had y'all ever had a detention order signed on her prior to that? Like as far as having, or had she, yeah. So if she hadn't done it voluntarily, had anybody ever signed that detention order on her, having her admitted for that 72 hour uh, window or no? Did um, you know of? Her, her mom and dad may have um, a while back, mm -hmm. but I, I don't know of any current ones. Okay. And that, and that, I guess I, we should actually gave that little, back tidbit too so both me i did 10 years in law enforcement as an investigator and then john himself he did 13 as well so oh, wow. so when it comes to that uh that's that's kind of that's why we started doing this just because there's so many people that need help with this and it right. brings awareness to the mental health issue and unfortunately there's a lot of similarities in all these cases that we work it's either mental health uh you know some sort of drug dependency or alcohol sometimes it's completely accident sometimes there's foul play you know all those things we don't really I don't dive too much into that, right? Because we're not trying to be the, the private investigator there. But however, mm -hmm. the thing we do know, or I do know the things to be looking for that, you know, and it, again, you being a family member, you know, the same thing, things that stick out that don't make sense. And nine times right. out of 10, gut feelings are usually correct anyway. So, mm -hmm. you know, uh, it it's just one of those things is super heartbreaking, I guess, because it, I mean, we're not talking about like a cell phone or something being lost. We're talking about a human being, right? right. And they, mm -hmm. they, they, they just don't go disappearing it, unless it's in, an intentional act. And, you know, I, I've heard you say she wasn't in the right headspace, things like that. But was there mm -hmm. anything that you would think that would lead you to believe she would attempt to harm herself or had she ever tried to harm herself that you know of? She had made mention before, when, but that was when things were just, um, personally going bad for her, but she wasn't, um, using the yeah, drugs yeah. or alcohol. It was, I mean, it was just basically her trying to cope yeah. with everything. Um, so she had talked about, you know, well, what if I just took this car and ran it into a tree, you yeah. know, would anybody even, but she didn't have a plan is mm. the thing. She didn't have any kind of a definitive plan, um, for, her to just walk away that's not something that she would do and I've said a million times that Casey is too bougie yeah. <laughs> to just walk away she um she had her comforts and she is a creature of habit and so for her to just disappear and not have anything with her 
um, not make any kind of contact with family. Um, and especially for this long, mm. it's, so it's not her. With the, when she went to the hospital, right? So the family or the guy that you were talking about and his mother, what was the plan? So if they weren't sure that she was going to be in the hospital for 72 hours, what was the plan? Like, were they planning on going to pick her back up? I mean, cause there had to be, mm -hmm. they, they had to have something there. Um, so when, when did y'all right. actually, when did you become, or when did everybody figure out like, Hey, she'd signed herself out or she was gone. They just let her go. So, and this is something that unfortunately has happened many times before. Yes. Um, the only difference this time is that they didn't call anybody. They okay. did not call friends, family, anybody that she had listed. Um, I've gone to the hospital to get her previously. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> she had gone through a pretty rough divorce. And um, so she had moved. And before she even had anything unpacked, she had a friend from uh, Florida that came and stayed with her. Mm -hmm. And not only did the friend uh, bring, you know, some uh, party favors, but yeah. boyfriend at the time were over there as well. And they were basically just feeding yeah. drugs and pills to Casey. Um, and it was to the point that they, they refused to take her to be seen because she had actually done I, I don't know if it's meth or crack or what but she had burnt both of her thumbs okay. I mean they were blistered um and when her children were telling us hey you know there, there's a lot of stuff going on we actually went and got the kids and my husband <laughs> threw everybody out um and Casey was pretty much just I mean she was not herself yeah. so we had her go, you know, to the hospital. She got checked out. They let her go at that point too. Um, when I went to her house after she was released, there were, there was, every light was on in her house. Every mm -hmm. faucet was on. All of the doors on the car were open. Um, Casey's phone was on the coffee table and there was no Casey. And I was frantic. I was trying to get clothes for her kids, figure out what's going on with her. Is she okay? Um, and then we get a knock at on Casey's store, and it's an officer asking if it's, if we were missing someone. And I said, of course. And I said, do you know where she's at? She was <laughs> at the end of the street, uh, screaming her social at a tree. Yeah. And it, you know, you could just tell her. And but when I hollered her name she looked at me so cop did the same thing asked if we wanted an ambulance I said absolutely we need to get her checked out again there's something going on so again they they were even kind enough to um just basically oh my apologies sorry no, you good. Um, <laughs> um so they were kind enough to not have all the lights and everything you know they brought the ambulance and they took Casey to the hospital um so I ended up going home and then probably about four or five in the morning mm -hmm. um they called me to come get her and so when I went up there I was going to get Casey and she was saying things that didn't make sense okay and so I made them talk to me we yeah. sat there for about two and a half hours to wait for a nurse or a doctor to come through just so I could find out what was going on while we were sitting there she was getting kind of antsy and impatient and she just looked and she said well what about the transfers to the Bellagio yeah okay well we're not there and that was somewhere that she had gone with her ex-husband um then later on, she was getting uh, nervous and agitated because she thought her daughter was still in surgery. Her daughter has not had surgery since she was a baby. Okay. So it was just all of these things that were coming through. We did go back there and I did speak with the doctor, but because Casey was able to have those periods 
of you know lucid thoughts and answer the questions they basically said there was nothing more that they could do um but while she was also under the influence of all of this she had sat there and turned and looked at me in my face and she said god please don't tell katrina and i looked at her and said i i am trina and she said oh my god and she just yeah so when I took her back to her house, she was okay. You know, we got her situated and then she was going to go um, eventually for counseling and all. Mm. But then again, to the picture. Okay. And it became, you know, another situation where it was just drugs and alcohol. So when she did go missing and we, uh, my mom had sent me a text and said, Casey was released. I don't know where she is. She's missing. I need your help. And immediately we started calling anybody and everybody that we could think of, um, put it out on social media, like, hey, we don't know where she went to. She wasn't in her right mind that we know of. She just kind of left. Yes. And then the next day, um, I believe it was the next day, my mom went and put in the missing persons report. Um, so that we could go ahead and kind of get the ball rolling on this. Okay. And that's where we've been so far, just really trying to find her. I don't, that's rough. All out of all the search groups and people that came in and stuff, did they ever, did they ever get on any kind of trails that they, were they ever trailing anything that they felt like any kind of odor, nothing, nothing. And, the, um, because of my hunch, they did take, um, three teams of the dogs out there um, and searched on Nathan's parents' property and where Casey was and also kind of the path that they had seen her take. Mm -hmm. So they did take the, the dogs over there. Um, most recently, we had Community United Effort. Yep. They um, had come in with their teams of dogs and they did a larger area um, over by the hospital. Mm -hmm. And so we were really grateful for that. Um, I have been in contact with them um, and there's going to be another little two person team that's coming just to do another smaller area that mm -hmm. they want to check. So is what around that area uh, near the hospital, is there any bodies of water like lakes, ponds, streams, creeks, anything like that? And I'm not yeah, saying that anybody put her there, but um some of the cases yeah. we've seen where people were suffering from mental illness, whether it be and it, children too, but it was like once we see it too, as far as uh, once people get older as well, like the Alzheimer's and stuff, things start, start setting in that way. They are drawn to water for some reason. I'm not saying she had Alzheimer's or anything like that. I was right. just curious because uh, we, we focus a lot primarily on water, right? So we've right. got access to um, mm -hmm. different resources with dogs and drones, things of that nature. But I'd use a lot of side scan sonar and do a lot of diving. Oh, wow. I, was, okay. I, was, I was just curious as to if there had been any waterways around that area that she may have been able to walk to, because if somebody didn't pick her up, I just don't feel like what, what time of year was it that she, oh, so it was July 5th. So it was super mm -hmm. hot. Yeah. Um, yeah. I just, I don't know. See, but my thing or the question I always have is, you know, there had to be somebody cause that's a busy road. Right. So, I mean, there's mm -hmm. always something going on right there. Right. Um, I just, I don't know. There's so many. And again, I know this, I'm not telling you anything you don't already know, but there's a million possibilities there. Right. Cause I like to try mm -hmm. to, I like to try to stay as optimistic and hopeful as possible. Right. Cause you just right. never know. And there we have, there has been one or two different cases where they did think that uh, their loved one was deceased. And then come to find out they were just basically in a different state. And one of them kind of suffered from some dependency issues too. And come to find out mm -hmm. they were in a rehab thing and just basically mm -hmm. thought people were ashamed of them. Now, I'm not saying again, not saying that has anything to do with this, but uh, I just try to look at it from all aspects on there, because if they've already came in and they've done a massive search, like what I was reading, they had done. I mean, that's the exact same thing. That's the first thing that we would come and do. So that leaves me to believe mm -hmm. that somebody had to have picked her up or somebody that she knew right. would have tried. Plus in that, altered state of mind you would think it would have to be somebody she would have to be extremely comfortable with i i would believe so um that she would well, now she did go and get into the van yeah. with just you know yeah i don't know if she thought that he was like an uber driver yeah. or that she had ordered an uber or or what that's why we wanted to talk to the person driving just to see like what was her process when she got in like did she say 
where she was wanting to go or Mm -hmm. you know anything just anything that can help us kind of direct us there um but yeah same thing we we have looked at so many different theories on that whether it was in um, a rehab Mm -hmm. we did think about that um we thought you know even trafficking um you know because greenville is kind of a hot spot for that in certain areas yeah because we're right there near uh atlanta as well that'd be another thing right and where she was i mean augusta um and and all is not that far from the the corridor to get on 385 and 85 so it's not out of the realm of possibilities we've been um fortunate to have uh, Jeff Brodsky, who's a friend of um, Casey's parents for a long time. And he does a lot of um, nonprofit work and Mm -hmm. he works a lot with trafficking of um, children and women. So he had a private investigator that was working with us too to kind of keep tabs on Mm -hmm. the, the trafficking piece if anything popped on that side. So definitely, want to look at every avenue of yeah. this yeah 100 because you don't want to leave anything unturned that's right just, it, it always just blows my mind though because it seems it, it seems on face value right that these people just disappear into thin air and it's it's never that's never truly the case it's just the matter of finding out it's it's always that small little detail that puts you right there at it right uh, as far as her social security numbers not been ran for anything no deposits no withdrawals no mm-hmm. There, yeah, there was absolutely no activity on any of her cards. Mm-hmm. So she did have like her EBT card. Yes. She wasn't even using that for food. She had um, cash on her debit card and had even received at that point um, stimulus yes. deposits mm-hmm. and they were never touched. Um, the only thing that had ever been taken out of the account was anything that she already had set on auto draft. Okay. So for like her streaming services and things that were recurring, mm-hmm. um, but no other like ATM withdrawals or, you know, purchases online or anything. There was, it, I mean, there was nothing. So July 5th, she goes to the hospital. She get on the 4th, she gets out on the 5th. Mm-hmm. And then the last that anybody has anything of her is just that van. And after that, it's done, right? well it shows her getting into the van then getting back out yeah she gets back out of the van and i mean she she leaves from where the van is so um and then it just showed her sitting across uh, the road you know where the doctor's offices are she was just kind of sitting there we even looked at um the possibility maybe she got on a bus but Mm -hmm. at that point it was a sunday and buses yeah. did not run that day. So we know she would not have been on the bus. Yeah. So, that's, I just, and that's the thing that sucks too about the time thing because, and I'm sure, like I said, Greenville County does a pretty good job uh, as far as looking into these things. So mm-hmm. I, I don't really have any questions on that, but it's just, there has to be a camera somewhere around there that picked it up. The only problem is with it being, what, two years Over now? Over two years now. Yeah. That even if it has a cloud database, that more than likely it's reset on that. Right. Um, I just, I don't know, John, is there anything for that particular area right there near the hospital? Is there anything that you could think of near that? Well, I'm looking and there's, what, what, where was the, then in conjunction to Greenville Hospital? Um, so right off of West Fairs, it is considered address or the street, at least I won't publicly put the address out there um it was, it was fairly close to the hospital within a mile it was within oh, a okay. mile yeah well, my, so. reason why i'm asking do you know because i'm finding like two or three little ponds <laughs> also that they might be private ponds in that area do you know mm-hmm. if, if any of those were searched i think <laughs> i really i'm not sure <laughs> right you know i'm um, as far as with what q did um I know that it was all around the hospital. I was uh, I was able to go to the site just, you know, initially, but they, even though I'm a volunteer with them as well, you know, they don't let you search on your, your own case. 
So I'm not sure where all they went. I know that initially setting up the mapping, they had asked about bodies of water. And if um, I knew if there were any um, floods that had happened per, uh, within the two years or excessive rain or anything that could have caused the levels to go up and down. So it's possible. Yeah, because there's, I see Brushy Creek and of course, good old Reedy River. Right. There's a couple of small ponds, like I said, not far from Ferris and Augusta Street and then, mm -hmm. then the Country Club. But I mean, I'm pretty sure if something happened, they would have spotted. But then there's a couple more near the Country Club. That's why I'm right. just curious. I'm right. all well within walking distance. It, yeah, so the that's what is really just kind of difficult too is that there is so much that is right there and just being able to kind of pinpoint the areas where they want to search. I know that we've had the dogs go down through there with not only um, Greenville Police, but also with Q as well. Mm -hmm. And I don't know how far they spread to do that right so. that, that's the main thing i was thinking michael was just all that just right around the hospital area it is lewis drive is the road gotcha okay because mm -hmm. because that's that's what i'm thinking i mean again if she's not if she didn't get picked up if she didn't get in a car if she didn't drive or if somebody didn't drive her somewhere take her somewhere then i don't think i mean again and I hope and pray to God that she's perfectly fine. But in the off chance that she is not, and it is more of a recovery type situation, I believe it would be somewhere that was more secluded to where mm -hmm. she would have felt comfortable. And like I said, something about the water just draws people to it, right? And I think that if they haven't looked into that, that it would at least be worth noting it, right? Because what when she was when she left the hospital, what all did she have? Like, what was she wearing? Did she have bags? Did she have a purse? Did she have anything like that? And see that she had a bag with her and I believe it was her. It was the purse that I gave her. Okay. It is, um, it was like an oversized bright red alligator, <laughs> um, purse. And she absolutely, I thought it was just absolutely gaudy, but she wanted it. And yeah. so I gave that to her and I mean, you could probably see that thing from space. So it's not an, a hard bag to and miss. That and that has not been located, correct? Mm -mm, it has not. Um, when she went missing, I posted the picture on Facebook as well, mm -hmm. um, where she's sitting on the ground with her hands up and she's bloody. That's what she went to Greenville Memorial in. Okay. And it was the same thing she went to Greer Hospital in. She actually had, she was still wearing her wristband from Greer Hospital when she was taken to Greenville. Okay. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, I was just looking at that in an article. So do you know, mm -hmm. did she like try to cut herself or? No, what happened was, is that she, when she got home from Greer Hospital, is, at least this is what was relayed to us, is that she was still having like paranoid episodes and she thought that somebody was after her and she actually went out her own bedroom window. She locked her bedroom door and escaped from her bedroom window. Um, I did put reels on Facebook of that too, because the neighbor that lived across the street from her, that was not her first encounter with seeing Casey erratic like that. So while her, I believe it was her dad was calling for help. Um, she was recording, just trying to, you know, get, that on of how she was acting they was trying to get a document of how she was acting um casey went out the window and immediately fell and she laid almost face down for about a minute and mm -hmm. they were calling across the street to her um while they were on the phone and she had you know sat up from there she just kind of took off running um through some brush and she cut herself up and that's how she ended up but she essentially hurt herself trying to run from something that we didn't think was there. Yeah. yeah. And that, that that's kind of, I, I guess that's one of those things too that makes me think it's almost like a mental psychosis type state that she had mm -hmm. been in over the past couple of days. Couple, I mean, I'm 
just from what you're saying, even if it wasn't drug related, I'm assuming she suffered from almost like a schizophrenia type thing, correct? Like uh, bipolar depression, schizophrenia. Um, I get like know, a- like uh, depression and anxiety. Um, sometimes I think that the hallucination part mm-hmm. uh, may have come from days of being on a bender. I got you. Um, so lack of sleep and being on, you know, all of these things. And I don't really think that it had anything to do directly with mental health. I think it was the substances that were messing with her and okay. lack of sleep. Yeah. Yeah. And the bad thing too. So between that time frame of 2017 to 2020, that's when fentanyl started making a real big appearance right. in the upstate. And uh, whether it be heroin or meth, whatever the case it was, a lot of that mm-hmm. stuff was getting mixed with it. And that's where you started seeing a, just a ton, a massive ton of overdoses. Um, right. So that's, that's pretty much, like I said, as far as the searching that we would do, I would be very, and we'll pull it up on Google Earth, which, I mean, we're not too far from it to begin with, but I would right. definitely think that it would be worthy, or not worthy, but it would definitely be worth it for us to go and check just kind of those remote water type areas, right? Over two mm-hmm. years, there's, and the fact that nobody's caught anything in leaves me that much more to believe. It's going to be somewhat of a remote, desolate type area right? Uh, if she is there. Um, right. And, but that again something like that massive purse and then the clothing that she's got on the stuff that she was wearing mm-hmm. i mean i truly feel like if we can find any of that she will not be far from it right and it wasn't um just you know just a regular like red shirt or pink shirt it, it was tie-dye yeah. i mean it was a tie-dye shirt that had the nasa logo on it yeah so um it it shouldn't be that hard to to see um i think a okay. lot of our um uh, start was a little bit slower because we did have so much um information coming in and we were trying to follow so many leads um uh, that you know ultimately ended up being uh, debunked or you know it, it wasn't the case so my and i know it's my aunt's concern too is her fears that this is going to go cold um yeah no that and that's a that is a valid concern because like i said i mean again these are just statistics right but 120 130,000 of these cases only one percent of them ever get solved and you know but we have had very very good success in going as long as we can get a last known location and that video where she was sitting over there that's exactly where we would start from and we Mm -hmm. break it down into a five mile well five miles is pretty big right we don't think we'd have to go that big but we break it down to at least a two to three mile radius right. and we started the bodies of water especially in a case like this right so we we mm-hmm. kind of specialize when they've got vehicles involved but we have found um our most recent one was out of greenville north carolina we'd found a young man he'd been missing for about a month month and a half and tons wow. of people had searched and unfortunately he was deceased but we were able to locate him basically within about 15 20 minutes being up there um, wow. it's just that simple to overlook it. Right. And yeah. no, we have no secret formula, no magic potion. We can't promise you anything. Right. I will promise you that we will do all we can to help you, but I definitely think since we're so close, it won't be a big deal at all. Um, help, possibly even tomorrow, you know, that, uh, we go oh. out there to look. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Cause we're both well, from the, we're both from the upstate. That's amazing. And honestly, I, um, I had only heard a little bit about um, what you guys do and um, because I had been a volunteer with Q and you know that's yeah. where you know a lot of that goes into but um, everybody on well, a lot of people on the Casey page have brought your name up and have yeah. you know tagged me on, on your page yeah. too so please talk to them so I know you have a good fan base out there that really, yeah they're they're extremely they loyal really, too and yeah. um and that's the thing about it and that's why I say like a, like these videos and posts and that's why we utilize social media it's because it's power in numbers right like it's just exactly. me it's just me and him mm-hmm. but when I post that out and it gets shared two three four hundred thousand times then you know that that's a lot of awareness that gets brought into it, and that opens right. it up to all these other organizations because it's not about me I could care like I'm telling you now like I don't expect anything like recognition this is my way of helping others right right and uh like I said it's just it's working um if it ain't broke I don't try to fix it so that that's what we'll do mm-hmm.